Your two-point warm-up or introduction is in your packet. There are some basic diagrammatic things you need to look at first. Because it's two-point, we now see two sides of an object. In other words, in one point we had things that they had a front flat face parallel to our picture plane, and we saw the tops, bottoms, and sides depending upon where it was in relation to our one-point perspective. Now, we have things that are turned. So we have a side that is receding this way, and all of its lines go to a vanishing point. And we have a side here that has lines that are receding and will go off to a vanishing point. In your example worksheet, I have laid out the word art. Notice I have all the guidelines going to the vanishing points. Also, note that it says complete these letters first. Do them in two-point perspective. That means you're going to do them to using the right and the left hand vanishing points. After you have totally completed the bottom part, the art, you may then go to the top where it says second. Place your initials here in two-point perspective. And you are given a three column, five row grid to place your letters in distortion using the vanishing points and then you're going to carry them back in two point perspective. Now for the demo. For my demonstration I've picked the word design instead of the word art. It's basically the same kinds of things you're going to run into though. First of all the first letter is a D. Notice that it carries from the front D back to the back of this block or this box that the letters fit inside of. One thing that helps me is to always think about this. If there's a D up here in the front, there's another one in the back that's mainly hidden. That will help me figure out where there are curves and where there are corners. Notice I have used the curve, just as we did in one point, to find the contour line going back to the D. Now, it curves onto this line going back, so it will curve off this line onto the back line. Remember, these lines are merely guidelines. They are not real lines, and their intersections with the letters don't make corners. Now, for the E. Now, for the E, I went back from the front to the back of the box, but then I have to come down. Just as you see the edge here on the D, you see it just for a second on the E. Again, if you come down at the bottom of the E, going back again towards the vanishing point, which is right up here, I will see this part of the bottom of the E just for just a little bit. Now, working my way around the E, trying to find their parts I'll see, I'm looking down on it, so I'll see the top. So I'll need to see that. And then, then it goes on to the back. The back would be completed like this. Now I'm looking inside the notches of the E. So I'll see the tops of the notches. But they go behind themselves. Now looking around the E, I seem to have gotten all the different parts. Now on to the S another curved letter. So starting at the bottom, I rotate the straight edge up. I see where it hits. And I see a little bit of the S there, just as I saw a little bit of the E here. Then finding the contours of the different corners, edges. Now on the inside of this curve here, I see nothing. But then when I hit here, the curve bounces off the straight edge. So I'm going to see a little bit of a contour just for a little bit. Now I'm going to work my way up to the top part of the S. Here again I have another curve. Coming off that curve I go back. But again, this S rolls onto this curve, so it's going to roll onto the back. Again, as I said before, remember if there's an S here, there's an S in back. So if there's this curve in the front, you know there's that curve in the back. So it's going to roll onto the back line and back down 
just as this rolls along like this. Then finishing up the S, I see a contour right here, and then one more on the inside. The I is simply like the E. It goes straight back for the top. It comes straight down for the back side, because verticals remain vertical in two-point perspective. And then a little bit of the bottom. These are the basic things you're going to run into when you do your example of art. Now on the top part, you have a box that looks like this. Now I'm not showing the vanishing point off this way and this way, but know that every horizontal line that I supposedly make that goes to a vanishing point, I'm going towards that vanishing point. I always line up with it going this way to construct the letters, and when I show the depth, I always go towards the vanishing point on this side, and the angle changes as I move through the object. Okay, For my word, well, let's pick a word we know all about. Art. A-R-T. Now, to carry these back in perspective, we have to use the vanishing point here to the right, over this direction. First of all, I'm looking up at it, so I'm going to see the bottom of it instead of the top. Well, when I look at this first A, this corner is right on the edge of the box that I've drawn, so I can just draw over it. Then I go to the next corner, and that gives me the bottom. Now remember, there's an A here, and there's an A in back. I like to refer to it as its twin. It's right back there. If this line comes straight across here, it's going to come straight across there. Now on to the next leg. Comes across here. It's going to come across here. But if I look back here, there seems to be something missing. Now here, there's a line that goes up like this, right? Well, I don't see one. Well, you find the twin corner. Here's this corner. Its twin is right here. And just as there's a line like this going up for the front, move your straight edge. And for just a little bit, you'll see that in back. Now, let's do the R before we complete the A we know we're just going to run into it. Well, again, we're going to see the back side of that, and the front side of that leg that comes down for the R. And now we can draw the back part of the A, because we know what we're going to see. Here's the angle in front that goes to that corner. Here's the twin corner right back here, keeping the same angle. I draw just for a little bit. Now for the top of the A, I come off this corner, and where does it go? Well, it goes behind the R, and then I don't see it anymore. Inside the hole in the A, there's really no valley that I can see. I can't see any crevices. But in the R, I can come from this corner, and I see a little bit of that crease or crevice or valley. Now to complete the bottom of the R, I come back here and I see that leg going back to the back, and I know it's flattened back. Now just like I had this line in the A, I need one in the R, and it's vertical in front, so I go to the twin corner, twin of this corner back here, goes straight up until it disappears, and I have that. Now I'm ready to do the top part of the R. Okay, I can go up here, come off the curve, and it hits behind the T. Now, this is a curved surface, so I don't see any other contours. Remember the rule? It doesn't bounce off the straight edge anywhere along here, so there is no line. Now, how about right here, though? Well, there seems like there should be a line right here. And it would go behind the T. But let's check it and see. Let's draw the bottom of the T. We have to do this before we complete the R because of this open area right here 
we'll make, we might see more of the R. Let's check now. We'll take the same angle here. Now this can be calculated, but I'm not going to go through those complex moves in perspective with you. Come back to here, and I come up, and note, it goes behind the T, so we don't see the twin of this corner. It's back behind the T here somewhere. Now to continue with the T. Several parts are easy. We see underneath this side of the top. We've already got the bottom. And we're on the end like we were at the D, so we know that this goes all the way back to the back of the box. So I line it up with the vanishing point, and I draw it like that. Okay, now we have to draw the, T, the twin of this line. Well, this is kind of like math problems. Sometimes you've got to figure out one thing before you can figure out another. What do we know about this? Well, we know there's a line going back to the vanishing point from that corner, because that's a valley. Okay, so I'm lightly going to draw that in. But I don't know where that stops, do I? It doesn't go to this line because this corner isn't on the twin of that line. It's here in the middle somewhere. So it's going to be here in the middle somewhere. What do we know about this corner? Well, we know this corner is at the intersection of this line, this line, and this line. So its twin is going to be at a similar intersection. Well, in back, we already know where this line is, don't we? So all we have to do is find where this line is, or this line. And that will show us where the junction is. In this case, because this line is straight up and down, we don't have to go to a vanishing point, it comes from this corner right here, right? So it goes straight up from that corner. Well, if we find the twin of that corner, which is right here, we go back, and we go straight up. It intersects that slanted line towards the vanishing point and you've found where that corner is. The other way to do it is to find this line. Well, this line is from this corner towards the vanishing point. So if we'd go to its twin back here, and then we'd go to the vanishing point, looky, they hit the same place. And this way, you have to figure out how these indentations go when you can see more of them, especially on end letters or end shapes. Back to your exercise now. Here you've got the word art instead of design, and you're to complete it first. Then, once you've done this, and doing this you'll learn some things you need to do up here, go up here and push your initials. Now, if you don't have a middle initial, make one up. Three columns, skip a column, three columns, skip a column, three columns. Put your letters in in perspective, then carry them back in depth in two-point perspective.